Oh, hey, everyone. Welcome to the Sunfall Cycle. What? We weren't even talking. We weren't, you didn't interrupt No one us. was That's even talking. I'm I so think... disappointed. It's like you almost were ready to go. So like you're like, you I know what? I think it was like the first time we've ever had silence. Like, yeah, right? We're all just sitting comfortable silence. You're all like an old married couple now. You said all we you got to say. We made it, guys. We made it to comfortable to silence. Yeah. <sighs> kind of over it you're like you know what it's every day i see you and i just i think i'm done i'm just gonna sit here and sip yeah. our coffee i, I was it. quiet because i realized it's 10 50 and i had all this time but i haven't opened roll 20. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. our children and, are in grad school oops. yeah <laughs> our, we no longer have empty nests the children were the here. only people keeping us together and now well i think i'm gonna go sail the world and you should start that small bookstore you were talking about. We should go we our should own way. We should travel ways. in our RV and write books yeah. about airplanes. Mm -hmm. We should go in our, our own wives, separate ways. Stan at Steakhouse of the Airplane Fortune. Yeah, we eat the same restaurant every Friday. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. The steakhouse family model, motto of like no rules, just right. <laughs> Oof. Never the same steakhouse twice. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, it's so nice to see you all. You all look amazing. It's uh, you know, pretty great. Well, all right. I don't I don't know about Steven. He's looking like uh I don't know. Well, now you look great. I just like the closer you got to the camera, the more you became some sort of specter. You were just like, I don't know who's going to No, no, it's it's all it's bad now. I'm not a fan. No, you've only made it worse. You've all, I Get away it. from the camera. I hate it. Go away from the camera. <laughs> All right, uh, superstar, take us away to Flavor Town. Um, I just read, I just read steak knife or bagel. <laughs> it's perfect. It's who you are. Oh there's God. no, there's no in between. You're the you. Steak knife bagel. bagel bag fits. Steven. Yeah, it says donuts, but there's only a bagel or a steak knife <laughs> inside. A bagel or a steak That's knife. it. You're like really excited, and you're like, ooh, it's kind of dangerous. I think I'll have a donut today. Stab. Stab wound. Well, <laughs> friends, let's find out if we're getting a steak knife or a bagel today. Oh, no. You'll have to imagine the Sunfall Cycle podcast today in which I told you all how amazing the PlayStation 5 is, especially the controller. How about you controller. never speak again? How about you? <laughs> Can I tell you that I ordered my PlayStation the same day as every other human I imagine? Still not here. Still oh, not here. That's so terrible, man. Oh, that sucks so bad. So, you know what? It's Where fine. Where is it? Uh, great question. Is it great. in the mail? No. No. It's like, it's on back order. Ten buck two. Then why did I, why did I order with everyone else? So what is the, what is the point? It doesn't matter. There's no, I'm still going to play Miles Morales whenever the hell I play it. And like, there's no other games right now that I'm like dying to play. So what the hell do I care? I'm just it's like, you know, it's the Demon Souls. <laughs> It's just the fact that Steven has one that upsets me. Yeah. It's like is, there is it's like there is no right. justice in this world. And frankly, I don't like it. All right, serious question for for those who have a PS5. Does it yeah. feel like a major upgrade from the PS4? You mean just Steven? It... <laughs> yeah, well, no, I, one. Uh, I do. Five. Yeah, I do and I can confidently yeah. say that um it's still in the box. Okay. And I've had it since day 1. <laughs> With the sealed copy of Demon Souls. Jesse, are you okay? Are you going to be all right? Probably not. That's a cry I'm for help. That is absolutely three that is a cry for help. I am overworked and underpaid. <laughs> All right, friends, we got to send cookies to bronze mm -hmm. stat. Let's go. I blame go. all that because, like, you know, we have the strong concept in my culture of people putting their evil eye on you. I blame all the soulless motherfuckers that are like, you got a PS5? I'm so jealous. Jealous. I'm so jealous. I'm jealous. I'm jealous of your PS5. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I'm je I wish I had a PS5. I'm jealous. And now I haven't been able to set it up since the day I got it. I 100% think it's these sad, evil motherfuckers, shitty energy. But it's okay because I have, I have great skin and uh, good credit. So. <laughs> Who really won? Great skin, and greater cookies. When uh, really yeah, if I could choose between great skin and a PS5, I'd take the skin any day. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Fair. Jesse, are you going to recover? 
Can we still be on your show, Jesse? And we're sending you cookies? This is some bull. The rich get richer. This is some bullshit. I get a PS5 and cookies. So for what it's worth, my pitch for the PlayStation 5 is um, instant load times are actually incredible. Like, I don't, it's almost like I don't notice it because it's, it's just the game just goes. But having that experience rules. And then two, the controller is actually legit, no joke, really, really good. Um, hmm. Like the, uh, I, I'm playing like a magic run of Demon Souls, right? So like casting Soul Arrow, it's like you feel the rumble start down in the in the handles. Hang on, let me grab my Dual Shock, not 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 the five with the four. So you you feel the rumble start down here, and then it like booms up to here, and then you can like feel the whole thing up here go, and, and like the the speaker is way better, so like it sounds like you're like flinging, flinging fire from your hands and stuff like that. It's super sure. cool. I, I mean, I Jesse, didn't... you should thank Stephen for that very good description because now you basically know what it's like to have one. I didn't I didn't I didn't know how big it big of a deal it would be, or if it was just like hype that people were talking about. No, it's the real deal. Thanks, Stephen. You're welcome, Eric. And you too, Jesse. Thanks for asking us to give you our opinions of the PS5 in a very serious and enthusiastic way. <laughs> Y'all going to turn me to drug abuse. I'm just letting you know. Uh, I don't know what's about to happen, but I got I got Tylenol here. I don't know. Like two of these, I might be like, Bleh! you never know. Who knows what will happen? <laughs> two Tylenol. I took two Tylenol. And I'm riding that train. You never know what could happen right now. It could be crazy. Uh, let's start this thing before you say other things I regret it having you in my life for. But, I mean, you have new World of Warcraft, so why do you even need a PS5? True. Yeah, no, it's so good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so... <laughs> What happened last time? You beat <laughs> Urso, right? Is that oh what yeah, time? we yes. beat her. And then, awesome. uh, um, Britt, you leveled up to level nine, right? Mm-hmm. Have you looked at like spells and stuff? Mm-hmm. Amazing, I love it. And then, um, y'all walked down the the cavernous hallway that led away from her huge cavern of death. Um, and you you like started hearing like the thumping sound of like some huge drum beating in the depths like once every six seconds or something like that. You followed it down the back pathway and you found like a a crevasse that extended up and down that this cavern sort of dead ends into. There's nothing beyond it; just dead ends into a crevasse. And um, Downwards, you hear like the sound of running water, and you see all of these nautilus fossils embedded in the walls, which I think you've seen before. And then um, up above you, you see like the great elongated head of some mighty spear that has been thrust through the ground, and then like the shaft of this spear like climbing up. It's at like a sixty degree angle, so it's not like. Um, it's not super vertical. Uh, you could probably like walk up it like monkey walk, like hands and, and feet or something. So this like is that. like a um, very big shaft. Yes. Like two of you could fit side by side. Yeah. So, this, like, so and, and like the spear part of it, the point, the tip is how big? Yep. Um, I mean, I'm thinking like 15 feet long and like 10 feet wide. Just the tip? 20 feet long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All That's right. not incidentally where the pulsing sound is coming from. Right. No, that would be the shaft, I think, right? It, I, I think it's actually coming from like up beyond the, the shaft of the spear. The spear? You can like, actually. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, you got to go way the up the shaft of, of the spear. Yeah, exactly. To get to where the pulsing is. Right, right, right. Okay. Just so we're clear here, Jesse. <laughs> no, I need to know. Like, how big was, like, is it a girthy shaft that we can walk yes. up? Yes. Yeah, gir girthy enough to walk up, yes. Okay, so it's yeah. got the girth to walk, yes. but two at a time, you said? Yes, two at a time. So it can handle two at a time. And uh, the, the, the spearhead of it is all shattered and broken. 
That's wait. I mean, that wasn't right. very sexy, was it? No. Well, you know what? I don't know, I'm getting confused. <laughs> Whatever happened could have been. But let's continue. Let's continue on. Yeah. Um. Uh. Other important that features of this sphere, not sphere. Um. Yeah. Like far farther above, like thirty or forty feet above the fissure uh. that the spear is sort of like thrust down into. Um opens up into a larger space from which the spear seems to extend. And there's like strange foul liquid that's spilling down the walls and into the depths below. Um, and from up above, in addition to this occasional thoom, thoom, you also hear this low, slow rushing sound as of a long wind running through caverns. I don't like the look of this. <laughs> It got her! We got her! We got her! Run it! We did it! Run it! We did it! Amazing. Oh, it took a while, mm -hmm. but I cracked that cracked that exterior. <laughs> she tried to hold it in. Hold I just wanted to see her. how long it was. We got, got her! We got her! Yeah. Alright, um, so this looks like danger. <laughs> it does look like danger. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't seem so bad. Should we climb up it? <laughs> are, are we trying to go moving? down or up? Isn't it moving? Isn't that what the thumb is? Is like it? No, the spear is entirely still. And okay, I was making this way more sexual than it was. The spear um, itself. Is neither nice. pulsing nor throbbing. It is just an inert spear with glowing runes. Wait, but the thrumming on. is coming above, but it made a hole below. So, like, hang on. Let me see if I can, like, draw a little diagram here. I would love you to draw a diagram, please. Visual aid. Yeah, if we could get a visual aid on this, I just... Because <laughs> for some reason, I thought that the spear was repeatedly... Um... Penetrating the floor. Yeah, no, I... Yeah. Yeah, give us floor. a give us a cross section. Yeah. Yeah, here's the cross section. Can you actually make it an isometric I perspective, please? I thought that please? the lingam was inserting itself into the yoni and that was creating <laughs> the, the I don't watch anime. In the demon. <laughs> <laughs> you know. The Aramitama. Oh, I learned that word. So I'm feeling good. Oh, what's this? Yeah. So here we've got oh, Jesus, this um, is... Kairos, who has a shield. That's a good shield. And That's a great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, nice. I'm gonna scroll in on this for the for the kids at home. Kairos has a shield and a javelin, and back here is um, uh, Sarek with a bow. Uh, and then here are some model eye. You know, on this possible. screen there were already versions of us, right? <laughs> Hush. <laughs> I like. You know, you, you know, just could have moved like us to the to that thing, though, right? And then here's this spear, the head of the spear. Yeah, it's got that bodkin shape. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all like cracked and stuff. It's real bad. So it would probably like be crying. Veins. But okay. Yeah. Continue. They're cracked. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they're, they're cracks. Here's yeah. the shaft of the spear oof that is uh you know what all right i stand corrected i was gonna say that's a very flimsy shaft but like it's got a little heft to it you know it's girthy but flimsy well that can all change if you just yeah, hone it, it like if you hone your weapon some space it's fine above and Kara can cast mending up over here i'm not gonna mend that all right <laughs> That spear made its choice. We that. need to, I can't. Please. Do we want to go down the strange uh, nautiloid Fibonacci spirals? Or do we want to go oh, man. I don't... somewhere else? Up the up the spear? Do we have any... Do I have a role that I can do to try and figure out, like... I mean, we're exploring this. We don't have a plan for exploring this. So it's very much like... 
like touristy what's the first thing that catches our eye well, that we want to do the we should probably go do itself. it like is there something i or any of you who would have better roles on this we maybe did. i uh we're, like this is a giant effing spear with like runes and shit on it that was thrust into the ground i, yeah, I don't know I guess, anyone that can you read the runes like, read the runes yeah can i try to read them yeah let's read magic a spell i don't even know anymore no, we don't we just like roll for arcana no. yeah give me an arcana roll I'm sorry. I just thought of our kind of role. I'm hungry, so I just thought of a sushi. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I one in order of our. There kind could of definitely role. be a D and D. Uh, <laughs> yeah, D and D sushi D &D place. They're not D and D sushi. Role and our our kind of role and. Yeah. 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 An animal handling role is brought to you by a doggo. <laughs> Fantastic. I would love to um, go to a D and D themed sushi restaurant where dogs are waiters. Wh what? Put it out there. Wait, why is that the? But all the waiters are dogs, though. No, didn't Steven just say a dog brings it to you? Yeah, only for the animal handling role. Because yeah. the, the 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 check is to see like whether or not the dog eats your sushi roll or oh, I see. Okay. All the way to you. Gotcha. See, I want all the dogs to be waiters all the time. That's the only change I would make. Fair. Fair. <laughs> Sorry. What do I know? So you're, what are you doing to examine this spear? There's these these um, arcane sigils are like glowing and smoldering all over it, just like all over the the surface of the broken spearhead and all up you know up the length of the shaft, disappearing into the caverns above. You can even see like the faint glowing from high above, uh, far out of you know reasonable sight. Uh, like, am I gonna climb? Try to climb up and see if I can. See well, more? Like, just paint me a picture, you know, like okay. what, what is Ankara doing to it? Uh, I guess I'm like trying not to get crushed by it in case it falls on down on me sure. further or anything like that. So I'm very uh, carefully approaching it, mm -hmm. um, I guess. And I I would probably like reach out to touch one of the runes just to like very carefully to see if it does anything, um, I yeah. guess. But basically I'm approaching it very cautiously. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you get close enough to like put a hand near one of the runes. Um, yeah, so it appears as though there are two sets of runes. Um, and one of them one of them you're you're fairly familiar with, you've seen before in a number of rituals, um, is a rune for strength. And like, uh, yeah, like structural integrity, like hardening, basically, like, yeah, tempering in a, mm -hmm. in a, in a weapon strengthening sense. Yeah. Um, the others, the others are uh, foreign to you. Yeah. But when you bring your hand, so like, remember this. You're you're, you're talking about uh, a spearhead that's like at its thinnest point, the size of like a dining room table, like extending out further into yeah. something you could very easily walk on, right? So like the runes are probably like the size of your hand um, and they're spread out like far enough apart that you could like walk around them um, and investigate further. When you bring your hand close, you can feel like this uh, crackling release of energy um, it, it seems as though the energy that binds these runes to this spear is not entirely stable. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. And are the runes also cracked or just the spear itself? There are definitely spots along this like uh, spearhead where like a crack in the metal drives directly through a rune and the rune itself is split in two. It's like inscribed into the middle of the... Mm of the spear, so, yeah. Hmm. Um, I don't know, I guess I asked Kairos, like, do you think I should go further and check it out? We can't, I can't read any of these runes except this one. What, Aya, do you get any other reads on this? Uh, I'm gonna cast Detect Magic. Okay. 
<laughs> it's hella. Uh, <laughs> yes, is the answer. <laughs> Hang on. Detect magic tells you a collection of information, right? Yeah, it tells me the the class of the the school. Oh, the school. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm not that well read. I ain't gonna try to read them letters, but. <laughs> I am a bit of a savant when it comes to just knowing things. Call it that folksy wisdom. You got them good smarts, Paul. Mm-hmm. They call them the street smarts. Okay, oh, so but... you are you are detecting two schools of magic. Uh huh. The first is abjuration. Mm -hmm. And the second is conjuration. Mm -hmm. I point at it and I say, that's that abjuration shit and conjuration shit. It says shit. Well, no, no, that was my embellishment, but yeah, that's what, that's what it is. Mm. And, um, getting a hint see, of, uh, <laughs> abjuration with a aftertaste or, a. A bit of a sort of essence or hint of conjuration. I think I've had a wine like that. Delicious. It's got very bad nose feel. Mm. Nose feel. You never um, want bad nose feel. Mm -hmm. I, uh, give me an arcana check with advantage for your detect magic. Okay. Oh damn! Yeah. Um, so yeah, one of one of the sets of runes is is intended to help the spear retain its structural integrity mm -hmm. under massive shearing forces. The other is literally a set of runes about uh, piercing the veil between planar realities, uh, and also like you can tell that these runes are potent and unstable enough that if you were to get too close to them, like touch them, uh, you would you'd feel a backlash of energy from them. It would be damaging. Wow. I put, put on my construction hat and say, well, see, these here are support spells, and they're kind of keeping the this whole structure together. So uh, this uh, spear cracking wouldn't even be here there weren't none of these support struts up here and then down here well that's where you got your standard run-of-the-mill interplanar piercing runes uh you see these from time to time in my opinion where did that hat come from <laughs> <laughs> i like the idea that she has set down something that she's whittling <laughs> piece um, of buckwheat in the mouth marshmallow is like sitting on her shoulder in a spring form just smoking mm -hmm. a pipe Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes a you see this well. in these old spears. Uh, yep. You know, yeah, the material is a little bit lacking. So what they'll go ahead and do is they'll just go ahead and try to reinforce that with these uh, runes up here, here, and here. Um, that one there is a wee bit unstable. So I would recommend for y'all to maybe not go near that. That could have some type of backlash effect if approached. It's very unstable structure. I'm gonna have to say that we can't save this one. It's uh yeah. Might there might be a wash. You you can absolutely see, Aya, that there are like chunks of the sharpened edge of this spear mm -hmm. that have been so heavily sundered by whatever forces thrust this thing into the earth that the runes have been shattered in as well and could with a with a, a modicum of effort applied be torn off hmm point that out as well i say see here force has knocked this rune right here damn near loose probably remove this one if you wanted to maybe repurpose that but yeah you're just gonna have to i say level the whole thing put in a good foundation and start fresh on this one I just wanted you to do my sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know anything about it. 
I don't know anything about getting rid of these runes, but what clearly, if we just yeah, to try to destroy it. Clearly, this thing isn't from around here. Mm, yeah, yeah, that would be. Yeah, this is foreign make. Uh, my guess would be uh, maybe French. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> You could tell because the craftsmanship is a little bit willy nilly. I don't know what's going on <laughs> over there. It's because the runes are from the Champagne region of France. Yeah. Right, right. If it was American runes, they would be sparkling runes. <laughs> yes. Everyone knows, runes. everyone knows that. <laughs> yeah. The only Champagne runes come from France. Thank you very much. A very specific area. Make American runes sparkle again. <laughs> Yeah. And before people are like, why is bronze out of character this entire time? <laughs> Listen, I, don't... I watched a lot of Bob Vila growing up. and He's I... a role. You're in character. <laughs> Nobody can tell you how to play Aya. You're Aya. I take it all as it comes. I if you just assume... start standing up and talking like that, I'm like, Aya's, Aya's uh, whatever this is today. What did that construction look good? I buy it. Yeah, she was growing up. Yeah. My belief is suspended. Yeah, what we Very didn't know high. is that there's a whole backstory yeah. where Aya took a few jobs before summoning demons. I was actually void. one of the assistants on this old dungeon. And <laughs> we, would, we would go through and appraise some of the arcane traps and some of the pitfalls. Yeah. And uh, so I've done this type of work before. I can definitely tell you this is foreign make. Um. And uh, it's got some probably some we probably take some ideas from it on how to pierce the veil between two worlds, but yeah. You, know. mm. you can probably nice take this over portal. to Artifacts Roadshow and uh, get mm. it appraised. What how should we do? Not with a, how is that not a bit? <laughs> how is that not like a bit? Also, more importantly, uh, yeah, can I examine okay. what mm. is below it? Mm -hmm. I'm not the one trying to who's going to remove this rune so like it's not my my call but it seems hella dangerous i don't think we should but i think i think i think we should honestly i think we should i think aya should honestly i think we probably shouldn't but also there's a lot of me that like really wants to see what happens i kind of want to see what do. happens when she does it <laughs> if she dies no harm no foul hmm Maybe she lose uh, his strength buff and become a normal well, person. Well, if you look at the pressure cracks here, here, and here, uh, this rune's probably the easiest one to remove. I could probably just and I take like my sword cane that is now like in cane form, kind of wedge it into the crack and then just use that as a lever and push. Now, to be clear here, I, I feel like I accidentally gave you the impression that it was the rune that could be removed when the mm -hmm. rune has actually been etched into the metal. It's actually like oh, shards and chunks of, it, right? of the blade of the spear, which you could remove. Oh, oh my yeah. bad. I thought it was, yeah. We okay. should do that. From the rest of the spear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought this was like a Diablo socketed situation. make a rune situation. blade. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, you were asking what's below what's below the spear? What's down like in yes. the crevasse below you? Yes, what, in the crevasse. You... Yeah. Um. Uh. As mentioned before, like you you have dark vision, right? Sorry. I do. Yeah. So you can you can see down in you know like the the twists and turns of the crevasse as it descends deeper into the earth. From somewhere far below you, you can hear the faint sound of rushing water, um, and you're reminded of your time crawling through the bowels of the earth it previously uh when you have at times used the sound of running water as a navigational aid you think from examining this that this crevasse connects down to like the warren of caverns where you found melissa and where you fought um uh shadow sorry so and... so so the, so the swirlies that are there are kind of like the uh weird shell shit we were walking on yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The, so these are like fossils in the rock wall that are these like coiled shell creatures nautilus creatures um and <laughs> Did we did we fight something down there besides the bunch of things fought that like you. hooked on our faces 
Yeah, you you fought you fought you and you fought a pair of um, uh, bone nagas and mm -hmm. uh, you, you found you found the skull of an ancient god and communed with it. Mm -hmm. So is the can we make an assumption that this like whatever dripped off this spear? Can we make the assumption that the ancient god was killed by said spear? And his skull is down below, like that kind of thing. Like, what is the? How did the crevasse I mean, come to be? Like uh, the 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 ancient god, uh, you know, way down below is really really far away from this. So, like, if something happened with this spear, it would have to be like have happened in another place and at another time, and this is a separate incident. And I don't know. That seems like a stretch. So we don't know what this spear was used for at all. Correct. Great. Well, I say we go up. I'm tired of being underground. It's moist and damp, and it mm. gets everywhere. I hate mm. it. Mm. All right. Well, that's what I'm doing. Screw y'all. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'll go up. Yeah. I All avoid right. the runes and climb the the shaft of the spear. I grab on tight. Uh, but you, you go should first. Not climb the shaft of the spear, sir. I just told you going near the ruins on it. Or right, but I'm going to volatile. avoid the ruins. I'm going to use my amazing abilities. Okay. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. There is enough ruins. space to avoid the ruins. If okay. it's very big, you can walk two by um, two up that shaft. It's a huge yeah. shaft. Give two me people a... can take that shaft at a time. It's very big. Come on, Aya. <laughs> Aya, take this shaft with me. Give me an athletics check. Aya, come grab this giant shaft with me. Come on. We'll go up it together. Come on, hold on tight. It's very big. Come on. Eric, I'm going to make you give me a dexterity saving throw. You keep yelling down to your companion. <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on up here. Right, give me a dexterity saving throw. Everything's totally fine. Get up here. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, a 16 is not rogue enough. Is fairly dexterous. Oh, I was like, no way. I start climbing up. I'm yeah, like, okay, I'll fine, go. Fine, fine. Okay, yeah. If Aya goes, I'll go. All right, come on. All three of us can handle this shaft. Come on. What do we need to roll, Steven? Everybody give me athletics checks, please. Oh, boy. Oh no. Minus I, one. I think I still have twenty strength. Yes, you do. Oh my god. Are we gonna <laughs> oh, no. I'm gonna yeah. need it. What's the modifier on twenty? Is that plus five. five? So I got a nine. Oof. Do you have any bonus to your athletics ability? I have a plus one normally. Okay. Or wait. Yeah. So let's see. Sarek, wait, and Kara uh, uh, strides upwards, passing Sarek. Um, so, like, it's 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 hard to climb because it's You're sort right. of- You're right, this is fine. See, I told it's you. It's at an angle. Um, it's, like, deeply angled. So, uh, like, it's, it's, it's not vertical, but it's almost more awkward because it's not, you have, like, the false sense of, like, oh, I can walk up this, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. um, so as you're sort of climbing your way up it, you actually slip and slide backwards, sliding directly over one of these runes. Who does? Um, and it like Me? just the energy emanating from it just sears into you. Uh, who does this? You, Wait, you, like, I slide, slide backwards across it. Wait, who you are you take... referring to? Are you talking about me? <laughs> I'm Why will you not about... answer me? Do you not hear I'm, me? I'm Is the shaft too big? Starek, you have to wait your turn. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't hear you. I was simply asking who was getting destroyed by the shaft, and you refused okay, to tell you me. Wait a minute, Sarek. You Tom wouldn't White. tell me who was getting wrecked by the take shaft. Care of you in no time. You're gonna take care of me with this giant shaft, Stephen. Do I take and three po hit points? Take three rating. Okay. <laughs> Sarek, you do the same. You you slide all over this shaft. 
It's too big for you to hold on to. You just slide down it slowly. Well, like you don't have to be immature about it. out on the surface of the shaft. Yeah. Don't worry, Sarek, it's a rough ride, but it didn't kill me. You don't, you don't have to be children about this. It's painful when you get take injury. From as you slide shaft. down, your face just like rubs across <laughs> one of the rooms as you slide over your way down my, the shaft. Oh, you take nice knowing you. <laughs> three radiant damage. Ow. Um, who else? Kairos climbs freely. It has, is having no problem making mm -hmm. his way up the shaft. Uh, uh, Aya, unfortunately, falls. Yeah. Aya, roll 1d2 for me, please. We're going to see how many tens of feet you made it before falling. Okay, so that means you take 1d6 falling damage. Whoop. Three. Everybody took three damage. Hooray! Mm -hmm. Kairos. Yeah. As you climb up towards like uh the the fissure above where the spear seems to like emanate from, mm -hmm. um, you can see just a little bit into the room beyond. Um what do I see? Yeah, you you see like dim pulsing red flickering light that just sort of like rises and falls in a sinusoidal pattern. Um, and occasionally you see like flashes and flickers of uh, translucent pink lighting. Um, and uh, sort of in, in, in and among all of this, there's this like steady glow emanating from off to the right uh, as you're like looking up at this, you know, crack in the ceiling, right? Like off to the right, there's a steady glow. Um, the room beyond looks like uh, uh, soft and spongy and tissue-like, and like the walls are, you know, like a deep, dull red. Um, and up far above, like you can see that this spear actually transfixes the entire chamber that you're looking up into. And far up beyond, like 50, 60 feet, something like that, um, it sort of like cleaves through the roof of the chamber you're looking up into. Um, yeah. And there's like um, sort of a shattered ceiling that looks like some um, smooth organic stone that's been like shattered and broken open by this by this spear. As you're taking all of this in, you notice something else, which is some pseudopod sort of extrudes itself from the wall near you, some ten feet ahead of you. <laughs> And it looks in your direction, and it looks kind of like an undersea anemone. So it's like a fleshy tendril that has like branches out into like you know thirty fleshy tendrils. It's a bright pink, uh, fading to purple at the tips, and in the center of all of the fleshy tendrils is a, an unblinking yellow eye that is staring at you. And as it stares in your direction. Um, you see like this withering uh, heat wave appear around all the tendrils that are looking at you. Nope. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Fall back. Okay, all right. Fall cool. back. Nope, nope, nope. Not doing this one. I just like the idea that it's so quiet and we're waiting. Kairos is the only one who made it up there. And then we just hear him go, nope. Nope. <laughs> coming back down. <laughs> just come back down. <laughs> <laughs> Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> yeah. Um, as it as it stares in your direction, um, there's almost this line that you can trace from it to and then through you, Kairos. Sure. Where there's this shimmering line of like heat mirage in the air. I think that's called a Sirocco. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I think that's what that's called. Anyways. Sirocco. Yeah. yeah. You know so many words that I don't know. It's so cool to learn words from you every week, Eric. You get out. There is. All right. I, I'm kind of glad you all did not get up there. Uh, we don't want to see what's up there. There's it's a Sirocco. And we're all intense. just like, none of us know what that means, bro. 
No, there's a strange tentacly monster. It's like a leviathan only in the sky. It's mm. not great. What's down, Steven? So, <laughs> Kairos, as you like move back along the line that this heat wave is traversing, um, quickly, within approximately six seconds, uh, the heat sort of coalesces into a purple beam <laughs> and blasts straight through your line of travel. Through your body. You are dead. Great. Please Bye. make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, God. At least I'm good at it. Oh! <laughs> Unless I roll a one. <laughs> wow. Why would you say that? All right. Jinxed. You take uh, 20 psychic damage. Oof. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Are you okay up there? No. No. <laughs> no. Gosh. I, I think he stubbed oh, his toe. That no, happens God. to me. I've right in the brain. Gloyvin, <laughs> right in the brainium. Do I need to like make a balance check or something to stay on? Or am I, am I yeah, okay? I'm like at this point. If I hear him making that noise, I'm like create a human, like a create a human fall, like <laughs> trust <laughs> fall time. Just fall, no. like no, Kairos. Hey, no. Yeah. Um, I thought you had traversed back down the spear. Oh, I away. did enough. Okay. Yeah. So like um, and also because this is psychic damage, there's no physical impact. There's no like push or pulse or impulse or anything like that. It's just like. Mm -hmm. Uh, an incredibly strong brain freeze. <laughs> yeah. And thanks, um, I hate it. Yeah, like you, you shake your head, recover, um, and and the thing looks um, like like it coils all of its tendrils in and, and sort of retracts just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I I see the tendrils. And I'm just going to, it's a long shot here. I say in deep speech, because I speak that. Uh, uh, ahoy! There. <laughs> Greetings I'm... and salutations to you and yours. Great tentacled one. I stand outside fireball distance. <laughs> let me, let me look at languages. I, is this thing going to be like, oh, shit, just another day. It's a living. <laughs> you would not believe the morning I had. I miss him. <laughs> Jesus, it's terrible over here. My eyes are heat vision. Have you ever tried to look I at anything? I can't even go to a museum. It's terrible. <laughs> I'm like the shitty X-Man no one likes. Oh, my God. Even his girlfriend ditched him for the dude with the claws. You know what I'm saying? It's terrible. Aya is... What languages do you speak? I speak deep speech in common. Okay, cool. Um, you, you speak out um, and you hear a response, but it's not in any language you understand. You hear this... Uh, do we, any of us understand it? Tell me what languages you speak. I Inkar. speak common, elvish, celestial, primordial, and druidic. Yeah. This is celestial, Inkara. Woo! What? <laughs> it says, intruders, be gone. Hmm. Tell it to chill out and what's going on? Be like, yo, dummy. I'm not going to call it dummy. Well, that's how you get something to respond. You I say, barely politely dummy. say, we're not trying to be intruders. We're just trying to get out. <laughs> what do you, uh, want to be friends? Can we be friends? Will you please not kill us? It says, no friends with trespassers. Okay, okay but like, I, I say to, I say to Ankara, okay, but like, this isn't this bitch is playing so who's really trespassing who here that's true that's true she's right i mean know. there's a spell to send her back to where she came from and that's I mean, why I'm like 
Where, what, uh, what, what area are you talking about? I mean, this whole cave, are we still trespassing right now? I'm not sure where the line is. I didn't see a sign. What? Uh... You're being kind of a dick for someone who's in banish range. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Talking mad shit for someone in banishment range. Amazing. Um, I love it. Uh... It responds by extruding its many tendrils again and opening its yellow eye in your direction. And the, the glowing Sirocco of yeah. heat wave uh, surrounds its tendrils and forms a line that traverses directly through Kairos. Um, where are the rest of you standing in, in relation to Kairos? I Eldritch Blast her. As soon as she's got laser trained on Kairos? <laughs> Why is they? Why is it doing this? I'm just trying to have a conversation. I'm nowhere near any of this. Is this like the thing where we at see like the red feet dot away. forehead? Yeah, it's like, you're made I've seen Predator. Like, well, I hasn't, but I've seen Predator. I've seen Predator too. It was a fabulous Give stage play piece. back in my home city. Are you are you Eldritch blasting Aya? Yeah, twice. Go ahead and roll. What does she think she's doing? Yeah. Oh. I can like you vividly fired. see this, by the way. This is great. Yeah. I ain't afraid of no yeah. celestial. <laughs> like through you, the cracks. Uh, there's we, we like we can't even see the sky. Sense. Like behind this thing. It's just this thing is taking up so much space of just like the whirling of the tentacles and then the eye opens in front of it. It's great. It's great. I see yeah. it. Yeah. See the fissure. About to get poked and, um, in the eye. You, you fire twin Eldritch Blast, pew, pew, and uh, both of them strike it, mm -hmm. <laughs> dealing zero damage. Oh, God. Okay. It's immune to force damage? I run. Because, <laughs> as a reaction, the thing retracts its tendrils, whoop, closing them over its eye, and then whoop, it sloops back up against the wall just to make like a fleshy bulge against the wall but it's no longer got the it doesn't have the tendril pointed at kairos it doesn't anymore. have a tendril pointed okay. at you and okay. the glowing uh line of heat energy vanishes okay so this is good this is good uh i'm like there's no need to be training lasers on anybody Yeah, she can't understand me, but still. No, I'm like, I'm just translating for you. I'm like, there's no need for that. Why are you behaving this way? Um, <laughs> it extrudes one tendril and looks down at you with an eye and it says, be gone. You be gone. <laughs> you be gone. You won't even tell us what you're gardening. You won't even explain how we... Broken rules that we didn't even know existed. This is not fair. This is a kangaroo court and we're not going to leave. <laughs> it ex it extrudes the tendril back over its eye. Oh. So the spear is coming up into this room? <laughs> yeah, so the, the spear extends past this strange anemone creature up into the chamber beyond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, crazy idea, but uh, hear me out, Ankara. How do you? How close? How small do you think the space above us is? And could you just heat the spear up with heat metal? Hmm. So, <laughs> the tip of the spear, the head of the spear, is metal, but the shaft of it is actually wood. Hmm. Could you? Okay. Could we do like just? I was hoping own... she was sitting on it, and we could just. <laughs> Melt it. Can Ankara turn into anything? I don't know. I don't think I have any more wild. Oh, wait. Did we take a short rest? We did. Yeah. We like, did. Can you okay. turn into anything small and flighty and just go see what's on the other side outside of this thing? Yeah, I can just I'm, fly up. The way it was described, I'm assuming this is like a body, though, right? It's like pink and like there's like, you know, it's got weird fleshy walls mm -hmm. and it's pierced. And I'm like, at least let's figure out where we're at in the world, maybe. Yeah, I'll just turn into a bird. Cool. Right this what, kind, what kind of bird? Um, let's see. I'm looking for a good bird. Like a big, 
like a big bird. <laughs> big bird. <laughs> Sorry. Like a vulture. <laughs> I said it before I heard it, and then I, yeah. It's you turned into Big Bird. I turned into Big Bird and walked my ass up there. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, Celestial. Hey, if anybody could get the Celestial to stop being ornery, it would be Big Bird. Ooh, what about a vulture? Killer. I love it. This is the best flying form at eighth level. Okay. Oh, wait. It became obsolete. Wait, sorry. I'm like reading. I like, okay. Kara. <laughs> giant eagle. Giant eagle. I'm a giant eagle. Awesome. Sorry. Uh, fantastic. Giant eagles like 10 foot wide wingspan, right? It's oh, like I need to be small. Creature. I forgot. I get You'd be like a bat? About becoming a bird. I can become a bat. I mean, I, I've seen a bat too. I can become pretty much anything. I could be a, a raven. Wasp. You could be a wasp? Yeah, I can turn into a giant a wasp. wasp. Would, oh, giant. Oh, I thought you. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking. <laughs> Like I need a little. I need a little animal. Let's see. Oh. I'm too high in the CR ratings. Ooh, I could become an. I was owl. going with white good Anglo-Saxon stealth. Protestant. Huge dark vision range. Keep Ooh, hearing in sight good. and good fly speed. Okay, owl. Woo, woo. Killer. Uh, and Kara, tell us a, a brief regale us with a tale of how you found and learned how to transform into an owl. Ooh. <clears throat> okay. Well. I was on an adventure going to meet my friends at uh, some hot springs because we were going to go swimming. And I was walking through the woods and I heard the sound. Woo! Woo! And I said, oh. And I kept walking to go meet my friends. And then I heard, woo! Woo! And I said, hello? Woo! Woo! I couldn't see it. So I thought, it'll come out when it's ready. <laughs> so then I found my friends at the hot springs and we all went swimming and then we heard it again. Woo, woo. And then I looked over and there was an owl at the edge of the hot spring. Yes. And the owl said, woo, woo. And I said, do you want to come swimming? Woo. I said, Come on, come swimming. And the owl picked up its little feathers and it dipped its little owl claw into the hot spring and it went, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> ooh. And then it, it slowly walked into the hot spring. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> and then we went swimming together and we had a whole day together. And then we sat by the fire to warm up and dry off when the sun went down. And I asked the owl who it was and how it was doing. And all it would say was, woo, 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 And I went, that's really cool and interesting. And the owl said, woo. And then the owl had to go because I think it had an appointment. Um, so we said, bye. And then now, every time I'm walking through the woods, and I hear, woo, woo, I think, hot springs. That was a good day. That's my story. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. It was like it was listening actually, to my mom tell a joke. I will say, who? I'm just, I'm just saying, so really. <laughs> that was the. <laughs> 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 that was there. I mean, there was. It was like a children's story. There was no pun. No, was there was great. no joke. There was not. You just told a story, and it, it was sweet and innocent. And I, frankly, am a little disappointed. But like, all right. I'm Good sorry. Stories. I got put on the spot. You asked. Wait, me you're disappointed? What? An no, owl, that was and that's fantastic. How I had him in my brain. That's what uh, happened. You know what? I thought for fun. sure at the end it would be like. He had an appointment and you said, oh, with your doctor. And he said, who? I was waiting for like, a, I had a whole, I was like in my mind, I had a whole bit was going on. Like I was waiting for it. And you were just like, and he went away. And I, was I like, like, I liked God. it. Sometimes that stories been really good, are just Jesse. stories. And they You're don't right. And I'm have... the fool. I, yeah. I, guys, I get really nervous when I'm asked to make up a whole backstory. No, I think you did well. <laughs> that was amazing. I was, I was like, I don't Jesse. know. Why is there a hot spring? Like, I don't know Jesse either. anyway. Asking questions. Really? I'm asking the same questions of myself yeah. as I'm speaking. Jesse has unreal, who unrealistic Jesse expectations. Who is Jesse Cox even? 
Are we even on this channel? I don't know. I loved it. <laughs> F that guy. What an ass. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I liked it too. I wasn't saying it was bad. I, I was I saying it was like, it could have been better. Jesse no, let's not. Make up a story. It could have been better. Jesse's just giving me the notes before the show's over. Every day after we do the show, Jesse calls me and gives me notes on how to make my jokes better. And hey, Britt, here's just, just a few We're notes. doing it early today. Yeah. I would never give you notes. No, you wouldn't do that. I, would like, I wouldn't know what to say. See, I'm making up funny stuff. There you go. Isn't that that hurt me. Jesse? Now, now I, now I know the jokes. pain you felt when I attacked you. I get it now. Lesson learned. You fly up. What is happening? <laughs> through the air. Having remembered this wonderful tale of meeting the owl at the hot spring. And um, the 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 creature extrudes itself from the wall again, you know, sea anemone like, and extends its tendrils in your direction. And this line of heat energy like carves uh, a path through the air, and you just fly straight through it and out of it. And you realize that this creature can't actually adjust its facing after it has sort of like began charging this blast. And as you fly up into the room above, you hear this. As the creature fires whatever psychic power it's using uh, in a line, you know, behind you that uh, is not targeting you or any of your friends. It's just sort of a weird cross angle to the spear. Um, and you're totally fine. And um, so you're flying up into the next chamber. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Cool. Let's see what you see. Yep, so the light in here is dim and pulsing and red and flickering, um, and there are flashes that fire occasionally deep within the translucent pink walls that surround you. The, the room is lit with a dull, steady glow from far down to the right. Um, the room itself is like a long, sinuous corridor. It's like a cylinder laid on its side. And the floor and the ceiling below and above you are like this hard, organic, smooth substance just punctured and shattered by the great spear. You hear the sound of like dripping and oozing, the sound of hollow caverns and echoes, like the sound of your stomach gurgling. The smell in here is awful, like fetid and overpowering. Please make a constitution saving throw. Al throwing up. Al throwing up. Al nope. throwing up. You're fine. No, I don't puke today. The owl Dang. does not throw up. Here, here are some things that you see. Um, uh, sort of like along the walls and uh, sort of clustered along the sphere a little bit further up. There are these large white organic globules the size of like a cow. Uh, just sort of like clinging to the walls, clinging to the sphere. Um, Far to the left, you see four of them clustered around what looks like a human corpse, wearing a religious robe and clutching a velvet cloth pouch in its hands. Um, this massive spear thrusts from the rent in the bottom of the room up dozens of feet through a cleft in the top of the ceiling. The spear continues at its like 60 degree angle, right? Um, yes. Um, and you, you hear this slow, thunderous thumping that resonates from far off down to the right, down this sinuous corridor. Um, and at the far end of the hallway, there's this uh, ovaloid, a segmented plate that caps the chamber at the far end of this same organic looking stone. The plate down at the far end of the room seems to glow faintly with its own inner light. Uh, first, is there anything around that I can use to like help them get up here, or is it like way too far? Um, is there something nothing I comes can to use? my okay. mind. What What are you thinking of? What are you imagining? Um, I don't know. I guess there's not a lot that would be up there, like besides like if there's vines or like <clears throat> something I can throw down. But right. I guess I'll go look at the glowing thingy and see what's going on with that first. Cool. Yeah, you fly down to the end of the chamber. Um, as you sort of like approach uh, the end of the chamber, um, uh, chat is yelling at me to give you inspiration. So you get it because I agree. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you. <laughs> Get inspiration for that. Um, you're, you're, you fly Thanks, down Jack. the chamber. Um, very quickly, you can see that sort of clustered around this um, ovaloid segmented cap at the end of the chamber. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two of those great cow sized light globules that look like oozes. Um, and also, as you approach, two of the anemone creatures extrude themselves from the walls and look in your direction. Mm. Hmm. Trying to figure out what the best thing to do would be if I should just like fly up hmm? and out. Like that's like, what I was thinking. Maybe doing that before I turn into something else to like yeah, let's recon, attack right? it. So yeah, I guess Steven, can I keep flying up? Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's let's keep going. I've looked at it. I kind of have an idea, and I want to keep so going. So the the like exit is small enough that it's going to require some dexterous flying to find an approach velocity that protects you from like being in dangerous range of these white globules that are clustered on the spear while okay. also getting up out through this, you know, fissure uh, safely and easily. So give me a dexterity saving throw. Nice, that totally does it. Yeah, you're, nice. you're a, a, a swift flying, um, smooth hooting owl. You have no problem slipping past these these creatures. I think as you, as you like, fly zipping along the shaft of the spear uh, up towards the exit. Like one of these white creatures extrudes a pseudoplasmic tendril and slaps in your direction, but totally misses. You're not even within actual effective range. So you <laughs> straight up and out into like a room that smells very strongly of incense. So let me tell you what you see. Yes. So the, the, the room in here is now like uh, a room built out of stone. It's built out of wrought stone, cut into blocks, fitted together. It's not this weird translucent red wall organic, you know, place. Uh, it looks like you're inside of a building. Um, there are no windows, so it's a, some kind of interior space. The, the light in here is very dim, though, of course, as an owl, you have no problem with that. There are low burning ornate golden braziers everywhere in the room. With your owl eyes, you can tell that they're not actually made out of gold, they're made out of brass. Huh. Um, it smells like heady incense and you can see that each of these braziers actually has a small sensor sort of sitting on the coals that's like wafting smoke up into the heights of this chamber. The chamber is very, very tall. It's probably like 50 feet across, but then like maybe even like 75 feet high, something like that, very tall chamber. And um, there are a couple of interesting things to note. You hear the sound of a holy choir chant song echoing from next door, like Gregorian chant style. Ooh, that sort of thing. And you see a number of important things. One, first of all, the spear is still sticking down into the floor, which is shattered and like magical energies are sort of swirling in a vortex around the spear, but the spear is much smaller here. It is not the size of shaft that two people would be able to walk up. Instead, it's like something that a person could hold. And in fact, someone is. The spear is still very long, extending at a 60 degree angle up from the floor, like to a scaffolding, which is erected over top of the fissure in the floor. Scaffolding is built out of like um, wooden rods tied together with rope. So it looks quite rickety and, and, and uh, awkward. Um, Standing on top of the scaffolding, you see two people, one of whom is holding the spear. His lips are drawn back in a rictus grin, and every muscle in his body is corded out. There's like no fat on his body. He looks totally shredded, but also skinny. Um, and a shard of black ice is driven through his chest, and black energies are sort of jetting both out of his chest and out of his back in two directions. 
How are his uh, eyes? Uh, his eyes are clear, but this reminds you somehow of the black spire of energy that you saw last in the realm of the sky whale. Wait, how big is this person? Human sized. He what? is accompanied by a person who looks quite similar, um, sort of older, like lips kind of drawn back, um, skin very thin and tight over his muscles. Um, he's holding in his left hand a holy book bound in serpent skin. And in his right hand, he holds a sinusoidal knife and he's whispering gently to the person who's holding the spear. Um, he looks astonished to see an owl fly out of this strange fissure in the floor, but um, continues to whisper fervently to the person holding the spear. There are a couple of other things you see in the room along, uh, so let's, let's call the right wall. There's a large pair of double doors. You can see that they are ornately carved wooden double doors, but each panel of the doors is mostly obscured by a rich hanging tapestry depicting a great serpent, mouth open, pointing its maw downwards at a small black circle. Uh, there is on the opposite wall, a reliquary built of fine wood and inlaid with what looks like human bone. I mean, like you can see like teeth and like the scapulae and stuff sort of laid into the wood, all of which is like polished to, you know, uh, an incredibly well caretaken sheen. Um, obviously something that people spend a lot of time paying attention to, but yeah, wood and bone. Um, and there's like a grating in front of the, like the doors of this reliquary close and they're not just solid wood. Instead, they have this grating like a confessional has where you can like allow glimpses of what's contained inside of the reliquary. With your owl eyes, you can see pretty easily there is a large collection of very fancy looking items like laid out upon the shelves. There's like a platinum brooch, a bottle of wine, a, a vase carved with knotwork, um, a, a couple pairs of gloves. There are like a couple small files and vials containing various um, energized looking liquids. There are a number of brass braziers sitting on the shelves of this reliquary that are the same as the ones that are lighting and also providing the incense for the room. So that seems like where these people would be getting the braziers that are, you know, servicing the room. Um, and set into the reliquary, like center back, is a tall brazier with a golden orb backed by radiant rays uh, mounted behind the golden orb. Um, there's a large amount of detritus around the edge of the room, um, cupboards, shelves, extra pews. Um, there's a ladder leaning up against the wall, and I think that's everything that you can see. That's it? That's it. That's all. Um, I regret not taking notes. <laughs> is there... <laughs> like... <laughs> Just just for clarity's sake, you came up through whatever this thing was that you originally came up through into a cylindrical, very tall building. Yeah. Yeah, room, a windowless room, right, Stephen? Yes. Yeah, and the spear is coming out of the floor and it's normal human hand sized and it's going up with the scaffolding and the two guys, the rictus dudes, are at the top. One of them's holding it, the other one's like whispering something in his ear, and they both look weird like the people from the whale universe well you've there's, got there's it, no they look one, human right? but like one of the the guy holding the spear has this shard of black ice driven through his chest oh right black yes. energy is jetting out of him right just as there was jetting off the back of the sky whale in the sky whale universe gotcha yeah and there's no uh, and when you look down so like we've been describing this from the spear tip down to like where this guy is holding it so it's not it's actually the other way around, right? It's not that the spear is coming from the floor. It's that the spear has been thrust by this guy from up above down into the floor, breaking the stones and then puncturing down into this space beyond. When you look down, 
you can see that there's like this magnifying lens slash spear like you know when you like stick a straw into a glass of water and it sort of like bends and also looks a different size it's that in a massive way like everything is distorted and the size and scale of things is just completely different as the sphere like penetrates through the floor and into this space that you just came from and there's no way out of that place at all well there's this large pair of double doors um on the right hand wall hmm. from beyond which you can hear like a choir singing holy chants so oh oh see Mm. But this is some necro celestial stuff. Yeah. Like obviously this now my question is yeah. they were talking about turning the moon into a necro celestial and now there's a giant spear that's piercing our planet. Someone trying to turn our planet? <laughs> Remember they were like, we're going to kill them. Or not the moon, the sun. They're like, we're going to kill the sun. We're going to turn it into a necro sun. <laughs> it's going to be great. And the spear through the angel on the top of the tower. And then the spear, the smaller spear with the old boy that's like. Ugh! And now a big spear going through our planet. Like, how do we know someone isn't trying to like necro celestial our planet? Am I making sense? No, the spear? You totally are. I can't figure out what the like what the spear has accomplished, right? Like them stabbing it into the planet. It didn't go deep enough. The head cracked. I'm, here's the thing. You write. You write about yeah. that. It did not go deep enough because there's still much more crevasse left, and it like couldn't get in all the way. I get it. The question is, did it? One. What if it was aiming for the big? Head down there. Yeah, I'm like, what was it like? And it didn't reach it because there's a dead god down there. That's what I was saying giant earlier. Spear. Yes, it just didn't get there. That's what I was it trying to say earlier. Except I thought maybe they killed it, but I guess you're right. Maybe they were trying to hit the head and stuff. bring him back so he could be like Whoa, and swallow the world or whatever. Let's ponder while we take our first <laughs> five minute break. I mean, that makes uh, sense to me. I feel All like right. Pepe Silvia okay. hours right now. Yeah, no, I I like it. Let's let's go down that road. All There's right. a lot to discuss. We'll be back in a hot sec. Maybe chat can figure it out for us. <laughs> we'll see you then. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Sunfall Cycle. Win. Yeah. For more nonsense. Um, I'm still not nonsense. sure what the hell we've discovered. Uh, that was the most descriptive, I'm going to be real with you, that was the most descriptive thing you've ever given us, and I still don't know what the hell you said. So. It was so cool, though. I mean, I feel like I kind of get it, but, uh... It's like a chapter in Lord of the Rings where you read through it, you read through it a second time, and you don't really understand it until the movie comes out. <laughs> like, uh-huh. Like, am, oh. I, am I right? Or I'm like exactly right. Mm. There was a lot to take in. Got it. So Very that's what a hobbit is. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just trying right, to think of where we, like, what we do next. And I, don't... I know that's what I'm trying. To, I'm looking at my spell. Steal whatever's in the reliquary. That's your new goal. As yeah, an my, owl? Question, my question for Ankara is, you know, you're still owl shaped. You're flying around this room. These two guys on the, the scaffolding, like, they're not really paying a whole lot of attention to you. They were surprised to see you, but they don't particularly care. Mm. So what do you do? Um, well, fuck. Just in general, way out of character. Everything that we've done so far to get up this, which was only one attempt admittedly, but just thinking about like, where we have to go to get to the room that you're in for us three is like that's what i've been out of the question at the moment. like is there um uh, steven can i understand like what the guy's whispering to the other guy if i get close enough mm. if i just casually like fly around like an owl and listen in <laughs> 
who, and I also, who have really good hearing also. So, yeah. you know, you you either fly close or like perch on a, an abandoned pew on the side, or, you know, you can absolutely hear what's going on over here. This guy is like whispering religious fanaticism to the spear holder. We are awaited in the world beyond. Dahaka will hold a special place for us when we realize his vision of the world. We have to break through reality. Quintara has blessed us with this ability. We must sunder the bonds that keep our worlds separate and beckon the, the serpent in, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's just, you know, rolling over and over, just like this constant stream. Like Sunday school all over again. I get it. Yeah. Uh, and the guy's just like holding onto the spear, and it seems like maybe like he wants to not hold on to it anymore. Um, nope, he's holding on. Can I use my little owl talons to like untie some of the ropes on the scaffolding? <laughs> Oh man. Because uh, you said it's just wood tied together or the rope, right? Yeah, it, look, it looks it looks pretty rickety. Not can no I uh, yeah, I mean can I just like kinda destroy this uh, scaffolding? Yeah, so <laughs> first um, of all <laughs> give me a destroy scaffolding check. Hang on, let me, <laughs> let me look at you. Roll a destroy scaffolding check. Flight of hand. Look at your character sheet. What I feel like I'm mean? on one of the like wood pieces with my little claws and I'm like <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And they're just like, they're like, are you, are you trying, trying to be very like, casual about it? Are you just trying to like slash through it, like, like, like attack with your beak? Yeah, I mean, or I'll untie it with my little claws. I'm not in like a huge hurry. I just so want to do if, it if without. If you're trying to untie it, then roll a sleight of hand check. And if you are trying to attack it, then roll a, an owl attack check. Hang on, maybe I can get you a giant owl token. Owl attack. Giant owl. I can't wait to see what you find instead of a giant owl. Edit in players journals, Brit and Kara. Edited and controlled by Brit and Kara. Save changes. All right, you should have a giant owl sheet somewhere now. Cool. In the in Kara wild sheet. Yay, there I am. Ta-da. Um. Oh shit, giant owl is large. <laughs> oh shit, I thought it was it was a low CR rating. I thought it was smaller. Can I be a normal owl with normal owl? It is a one. I can just CR. roll a sleight of hand if that's easier. Uh yeah, so like a normal owl will okay, do yeah, one was... two damage, but yeah. uh roll a sleight of hand. I think a regular owl is like a one eighth CR. Mm, it's like yeah. a familiar. Sorry. My bad. Is there, a, is there an that's owl what I was to do. character sheet? I was like imagining a regular a owl. owl. Yeah. yeah regular and then owl. like I, I dragged out the giant owl and it's like, here's this 10 foot wing. This is, owl. I'm just playing goose game on owl mode right now. Oh, it's literally <laughs> a challenge. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. It's actually a challenge rating zero. And but Stephen yeah, builds a beautiful, <laughs> Stephen builds a beautiful terrified room and I'm like, untie the wood pieces. <laughs> Look, that's fantastic. Are you also, hooting instead of honking? Yeah. Now I'm imagining Ooh. these like people with their lips peeled back and the thing being like, ah, you know, like in Goose Game where they're like, you know, put their hands up and they're like, ah, they start so, running yeah. at you. That's what I'm imagining they're doing. Like they haven't, I, I feel like owls. hopefully I haven't gotten their attention yet. <laughs> I am racking my brain for so, some sort of hootie um, in the blowfish joke, but I cannot make one right now. I can, it's not coming. Are you trying to be stealthy or are you trying to be like obvious? Uh, I'm trying to be stealthy as long as it takes to destroy the scaffolding. Okay, yeah, give, give me a stealth check then. <laughs> okay. With with your owl, which I've now given you, so that's stealth okay. plus three. Um, so do I roll stealth on my character sheet and then we plus three it? No, you roll or stealth on I... the owl character okay. sheet. Wait, where is that? Am I just blind? Uh, I gave you a new character. Oh, I see this thing right here. Got it, got it, got it. Oh, yeah. oh my god. Hey! <laughs> so, Inkara, 
Um, you you swoop in, gliding silently on wings of death, grabbing on to the wood of the scaffolding, and start like slicing with your with your your beak at these ropes. Mm -hmm. And immediately you hear this, "Hey, owl, get out of here!" And like this guy with the snake skin book and the serrated dagger, not serrated, but you know sinusoidal dagger, comes staggering over to the edge of the scaffold and like just like looks down at you and says, "Shoo, shoo!" What do you do? Uh, he says, no, not who, and starts staggering down the like spiraled ramps that make this scaffold. So he's not place. whispering in the guy's ear anymore? No, he's he's trying what to happens? make his way around over to where you are. The guy who's holding the spear is still just. He's still stuck there. Yeah. Is this like a rigor mortis situation? Am I envisioning this correctly? You are envisioning, envisioning it correctly. Okay. He's I'm clearly envisioning moving. the dude from Venture Bros. Brisby, yes. you remember yes. Brisby, yeah, where he's like, this is "Welcome to Brisby Land." That's yeah. what I'm envisioning. Excuse me. Okay. Okay, so is he's coming towards me. A welcome to Brisby yes. Land situation. I just sit there very still. Ooh. It takes him a while. Like he staggers his way down the ramps until he gets to the floor, and then he walks over to the corner that you are like pecking at. Um, he as he gets, as he gets close to me i'm sort of like moving on the <laughs> are you like on one of the railings just like yeah yeah away? i'm like standing on one of the railings i'm like no yeah yeah um uh so the, i think there's like two things either he catches you and stabs you or he or you fly away okay then i'll um, fly away sure yeah cool so you you know you sidle away and he's like get back and then you you fly off it's clear that he's not just gonna let you sit there and undo their scaffolding can i fly uh, but, up to the guy holding the spear now and start like clawing at him <laughs> <laughs> i'm just trying to get the, his hand i guess uh this is i don't know how many uh people's fingers am i gonna peck off in this game i don't know just start can I see if I can get his like one of his fingers with my claws off of the off of the spear? Um, let me take a look at what your happens? character sheet. Um, you have a strength of minus four. So okay, so I, I have think no strength. You, you you fly up there and you start like prying at one of his fingers, but he's like clamped his hands on this spear super hard. He's like actively gripping. You can't pry it up, but you might be able to like bite his fingers off. Uh, that'll take too long, I think. I'm gonna just... What happens if when I'm, like, I'm assuming I'm, like, on his shoulders right now. I'm just sitting on that man's shoulders as an owl. Cool. What happens if I, like, turn back into myself and then immediately turn in to a giant dinosaur and attack him to get him to let go in my ship? What? Right. Imagine being like in a church and you're like, God, this fucking owl's in here. And then it just transforms into a dinosaur. Like, what are you? <laughs> Amazing. I just think out of you. From this cultist perspective, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> here so, we go. Um, it seems like something that this cultist is doing is maintaining the like rift in the floor. It's not just that, like, the the flagstones oh. of the floor are broken, but there's okay. actually, like, there's a like magical a... rift there, right? Where, like, okay. some, like, magnetic lensing or something like that, everything looks bigger beyond, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I guess, um, well, I, I just said I was going to do that, so I should just do that before I change my mind. I shouldn't change my mind now. Well, I'm, I'm telling you information that you have prior to, like, killing this guy, but if you want to kill him, then that's totally cool. Well, I probably don't want to kill him. I'm just trying to break the scaffold so he lets go of the spear. Okay, okay. I guess what I can, well, maybe what I can do instead, I might have to cut this man's hand off. <laughs> if my oatmeal isn't fully cooked and I eat it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna die or anything, right? What? Oh, you're no. fine. 
Sweet. Slightly Thank uncooked you, oatmeal. I put uncooked causes of death. What? I put uncooked uh, like oh, oatmeal God. pieces in my smoothie every morning. Oh, oh yeah, okay. totally. Yeah. I thought I thought you were trying to make like a euphemism or a metaphor or something related to the murder of these two people. Be you know, no. no, if my if my oatmeal isn't cooked. I mean, you're not you're not, you're not talking, so when you you're say not talking like, about like steel cut oak. Sorry to cut you off, Brent. No, it's fine. You're fine, bronze. You're gonna be just fine. It's just oatmeal, okay. right? Yeah, it's not like death oatmeal. Okay. Yeah. You're that talking about just like this slice. Cut death. this guy's head off or hand off. Well, now I mean, my other my last question before I make any changes from an owl, Stephen, is um, so when you say it like looks like it's like through a lens, is there a lens somewhere around? Like, is there a no. mechanism going on? It's just the spear. It just looks like that. So you know, he's like, just his hand holding on to it. Think yeah, normal sized spear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Into the floor. Yeah. The floor is all exploded open. There's even yeah. like little floating chunks of flagstone. Sure. There's like little magical energies arcing around. Sure. The rift in the floor doesn't look like it's going to a cavern that's any part of this world. It looks like some sort of fleshy, beating, breathing underground of, you know, globules. And the spear looks like it's 800 times larger on the other side of this rift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. Wait, am I allowed to, or can I, am I too far away to like psychically talk to Aya? How far does that go, Aya? Um, sorry, I was muted so I don't have unintentional ASMR. Um, it, so which one? Oh, the, the awakened mind, it's 30 feet and I have to be oh, able to mind. see you. Yeah, you're too so that's, far from That's that. the big thing is I can't, I can't see you. Um, oh. However, if I knew to, I could cast uh, the other one. I could I could cast um, detect thoughts, and that I could probably talk to. But the other one, I need I need line of sight. You yeah. could hear her thoughts, but you couldn't speak back. No, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I could okay. hear what you were saying. Okay. About this ASMR, though, you can always fly back, Brett. I don't want to like munch uh, into the microphone, so I've been like muting myself. I feel like, like what if... yeah, you know what? Because I can fly back up if there's a plan. So what I'll do is before I just destroy everything and panic and break a bunch of shit, I'm just gonna. Well, no, I won't risk getting stabbed by that man as an owl. I'll just fly down. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You, you. I'll fly, fly back, back down. down. I'll just gonna wait. I'll fly back down. Fair. Um, give me a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> okay. Oh, as an owl. Cool, no problem. You fly back through the rift. You dodge the pseudopod from the uh, from the the globules, the big white cow-sized globules. You fly back down along the spear, down through the the, the broken flooring of this strange, uh, you know, organic chamber, down to the head of the spear below in the cavern where your companions are waiting. Okay, and then I think instead of well, I'll keep my owl form in case it's needed. So what I'll do is just psychically relay all of Speak this to Aya bronze. to give to the rest of the group and ask like what should we do I haven't I didn't destroy anything yet what should we do <laughs> killer so to summarize for everybody else just so that we remember what we saw the spear goes up through this long like uh, serpentine chamber like imagine a cylinder lay on its side uh, there's like these weird white globules clustered uh, along the walls and along the spear. There's like a, a dead guy in like holy robes. There's, you know, some like uh, bone plating cap at the end of the hallway where there'd be two more of these like uh, anemone creatures guarding the entrance. Um, and then up beyond there's this like interior room that's built out of stone with these guys on a scaffolding holding the spear down in the ground, you know, who have perhaps created or are important for maintaining this portal. I hate to say this, but like, I think we gotta go do this. I think we gotta climb this shit and kill everything in the next room and explore that damn room and then like, Okay, I agree. I agree. Even question: When I saw the ladder, how tall was it, and could it fit through the hole that the spear was in? It was quite tall. Um, it was probably thirty or forty feet tall. In fact, now that you mention it, 
You remember there was a small door at the top of that ladder. It was actually leaning up against the wall in an intentional way. It was leaning up to a small door that was like at a much higher level than the, the ground floor. Damn it. Should I fly back up and check the door? <laughs> what do you guys want you absolutely to? can. You can Everyone just knows doors are an owl's worst enemy. Yeah, it'll be really hard to open the door by myself with my little a owl really talents. Really polished brass doorknob, really smooth. Just oh like man. Open. Okay, so hear me out. What if no owl we lash. had Ankara talk to the Celestial and let the Celestial know that if she doesn't let us through, the crazy SOBs like right above her are gonna are gonna turn her into a necro celestial. Because mm. we don't have any guarantee i don't know if i'm smoking crack or what. we don't have any guarantee they're working together like it doesn't seem no. like there's any uh, correlation maybe a little but not directly i mean i get the sense of like you're trespassing and then i go up there and it's like this weird dark magic bullshit. Uh, they're maybe they are starting. working together <laughs> okay so all right so we, we kill her yeah i think we have to kill a celestial mm -hmm. First, then and we then go up there, go up and fuck some stuff up, and then we mess up their summoning circle, kill Bisbee of we'll Bisbee Land, the go through door. the door. I think I think we can do it. I think we could. It's going to be tough, but I think we can do it. Do we have anything? Question. Real that quick can buff our go. wisdom for all yeah, this freaking psychic damage. Also, what is the closest brazier that we would end up back at, like if we were to die? Oh, uh, the uh, forest, uh, yeah, hut area. But the bear is clear now, so getting getting so back here would back be pretty in. easy. Okay, yeah, yeah fuck it, let's yeah. go. Yeah, it. it's just we have to be a little tactical about this. So she does yeah. psychic damage, but but she can uh, she can't she can't move when she started targeting someone. So what if we had? Uh, I'm gonna speak a language Jesse knows. Rogue evasion tank. Baby, I'm here. I'm here for this motherfucker. I'm here for this motherfucker. Right? I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. Yes. Yes. The rogue I evasion love tanking. Mm -hmm. Um, because the disengaging and then moving and like attacking might be like mobility is going to be our biggest strength here. And we about yeah. to dodge uh, roll this shit. Yeah. We about to dodge roll and attack from behind. Let it begin. Yeah. I was born for this. And as we've seen, smacking her uh, makes her kind of withdraw that laser beam. So I wonder if she needs a line of sight. I'm, I'm going to assume no, because it's a psychic thing. But if it doesn't need a line of sight, I could just, and it's so big, I could cast Hunger of Hadar, like on the eye. So uh, it just can't see us and then maybe not target us. Oh. How, about, how about that, stupid eye? We got this. We, my only question is the other things in the room. What was the vibe on those? Were they also murdering? They were really slow. So okay. I'm not as scared about them because they were like. Slow compared to an oh. owl. I don't know compared to no. us. No. As... Steven described them as rigor mortis. So you could probably just run around them. Yeah, I literally and... sat there as an owl on that scaffolding while the guy was like, I'm coming to stab you. <laughs> I was like, no. That's literally what no. he said. No. Yeah. So I mean, we could kite them. <laughs> like they're... I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not here, a... buddy. I can't wait to kill you. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Uh, yeah, okay. Then let's but F I these people up. Like, I, for one, can't mobility. wait to walk in to the choir room of like 100 enemies that immediately kill us. It's going to be great. <laughs> to, to us. F it. Let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're going to have to, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think, because we have to stay out of that laser beam, mm -hmm. so it's, it's like, it's less about mitigating damage, because we saw what it did to Kairos, yeah. and it's more about, don't, the same. don't let it touch you. I don't think AC is going to help us here is what I'm trying to say. So I think it's like got to keep um, moving. I could also potentially go up and try to like claw its eye or something. 
because uh, I have flyby. So it says the owl doesn't provoke an opportunity attacks when it flies out of an enemy's reach. Well, as an owl, don't you also have crazy wisdom? Yeah, but I have really low attack skills. So I guess that's not helpful. And you have but one I have, hit point. Yeah, I have advantage on okay. perception, on wisdom perception checks that rely on hearing or sight. I might be useless. I could turn back into myself if it's more helpful. I was just an owl for scouting. I mean, I think... Uh, What's our game plan? Any and I guess, all that I can... First off should be to get to the next room. First off, let's climb this damn thing with rolls that are good. Then get into that room and attempt to... I think as much distraction as... Like, if you want to... Like cause it to attack you in Kara. Mm -hmm. Then you can like you're fast. You can like dodge stuff, right? And if I can be up there, I can be like dodge roll behind you, step step step, or okay. arrow arrow arrow. Right. I'm down. There's got to be something there. You guys want to start climbing? I'll just fly up and wait for you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. Oh, okay. Or I don't yeah. know. Yeah, 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 for sure. I will. Uh, right. I'll go first because let's get this out of the way. God damn it! All right, I, I'm gonna Ooh. go last. If I get hit by one of these things, I'm dead. So just so you know. Yeah, I might. I mean, my uh, 100 HP is low too. We're all gonna die in this encounter. There's no way we get through this successfully yeah. on the first try. But we're gonna learn some things. So that's what this. We're is. gonna learn that's today. Fact finding <laughs> mission. We're gonna learn today. All, all right. All right. So Sarek, would you give me an athletics check? I will. Yeah, I do. Can... Whoop. Look at that. No fear. Um, sorry. You smoothly begin climbing up this spear. Um, and Kara, what are you doing to like attract the attentions of or distract the anemone creature or draw its attacks to you? What are you doing? I'm just flying around it saying, cool. Woo! Yeah. You're just like presenting a target rich environment, basically. Yeah, I'm just uh <laughs> like just look over here. <laughs> awesome. Uh I put this little grick over here to represent the the anemone creature. Um yeah, you 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 fly around it and sort of like harass its head and it extends its tendrils at you and they shimmer with that, you know, heat emanation and then a line appears in the air of that same heat emanation which you then fly out of mm -hmm. and then 6 seconds later that line erupts <coughs> with purple energy. Um and you just keep doing this and it yeah. keeps trying to fire at you and you keep moving out of the way and there's like basically no problem. Um I think there's like a one moment, Sarek, when you're quite up near the top that it realizes you're trying to to get past it and it refocuses on you, Sarek. Mm -hmm. um, but when the beam appears, you just continue climbing the, the spear and the beam stays where it was and it fires into the empty space that you were not occupying. And, Great. Uh, that's it. Nice. You make it up into the room. Um, who's next? Me. All right, Kairos, give me an athletics check. Poof. No problem. You avoid <laughs> all of the room. You, open up the spear. you make it into the next room. No sweat. Aya? Okay. So I, I have, I'm just going to roll a d20, and then I have a plus five with athletics. Cool. Yeah. Finally, I rolled. Yeah. Nice. Man. You just like... I mean, I'm imagining you like on the underside of the spear, just like like monkey bars style, like one just like arm over arm climbing your way up. This thing doesn't even see you. You just like flip Listen, back up on top. She's like not actually have... touching it. She's just floating <laughs> upwards. You know what they call like crack her strength? Way up the spear. Oh. You know how they'll be like, oh, they you know, like that crackhead strength or whatever. Like when people are hopped up on something, they get like super powerful. Angel dust? Yeah, I got that arcane PCP. flux in me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just like wiry. I know everyone imagines me as Hulk, but I imagine myself as like wiry and just strong, you know, where it's like, what? How is this person this strong? And you're like <laughs> injecting them with like eight different kinds of like sedatives and they're still, you know, breaking the straps on the table and getting up. Like that's what I imagine it to be. That's like. you. Arcane flux strength. 
Killer, yeah, the four of you quickly make it back up into the next chamber. And um, uh, of course, Ankara, you're able to fly up fairly quickly. I'll describe once again what you see. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see. <clears throat> the spear continues like upwards, uh, sort of at this 60 degree angle up into the next uh, chamber. There are a number of these big uh, like white globules clustered on the spear and they, you can see that they sense your presence as all four of them start slowly sort of like sliming their way down the spear in your direction. In the meanwhile, um, sort of like uh, left along the room, you see like these walls are sort of like pulsing and flashing with little sparks of light back inside of these translucent red walls. But back to the left along the wall, there's a, there's a, like a, some sort of a priest who's dead with a number of these white globules clustered around him. Um, and he's clustered, clutching this velvet cloth pouch. He's like prone on the ground with his arms out in, you know, above his head. Um, off to the right, sort of the, the hallway curves around organically and far at the far end, you know, 200 feet away or something like that. Uh, that's where this slow thunderous thumping is resonating from. And there's this ovaloid a segmented plate that caps the chamber at the far end that seems to glow faintly with an inner light that um, brightens in time with all of these thumps, pulses. Um, there are a couple of these um, white organic globules around the door and you see two of these um, anemones sort of perched above that uh, plated door. That's what you see. And unfortunately, we're going to have to find out what you do next, next time, is our time here today. Let's come you know, to not, not to be picky, but next time, can we have like a bit of a symbolic drawing? <laughs> yes, I can get you. Because I understand a... that there's like anemones and a door, but I'm like relative to where we are, where are they? And now my brain is in tactical mode. I'm like, can I hit them both with an area effect? Absolutely. Is that okay? We can we can get you a combat map for next time. You're the best, Steven. Thank you. All righty. Well, that's it for us. But before we peace out for today, um, we've got a few things to to take a look at this week. Ah, <gasps> yes. Um, it's time. Yeah, so I'm just going off of, I know things are tweeted at me, but uh, I don't know where to look for them right now, so I'm just going to go off things that I see in the Discord. Uh, Stutter Phantom is coming in hot with uh, the sexy side view of, I assume, as he's being booked for uh, some sort of crime, a Sarek... <laughs> Uh, he looks worried about the look fact that... Look at that Roman nose. Yes, very, very Roman. Roman. Handsome. That is... Very handsome. Very handsome. Some might say Very the most nice. attractive of elves. Very then, long speaking hair. Speaking of uh, the most attractive thing Love ever it. seen ever, um, I'm gonna open the original because this is awful. Just the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, here we have here we have our famous snake with snake eyes that yeah. snaked the time oh snake. My God. <gasps> and I just want to. I just want to. I just so want to. Cool. Terrifying. You know what I love about it? It looks if you like don't look closely at it, it looks like the little eyes are like yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> oh is. yeah. How did you? <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. I'm gonna fucking eat you. <laughs> Terrifying. Amazing. It's also it's they got. I love the the background as well. Like but I don't I know how you do this like, composition. Yeah. Look at it's the just color great. work. Like yeah. the teal and the purple and the grays and the pink. Yeah. Like this is insane. I thought it was 3D for a second. I it's thought so it was 3D. Yeah. 3D. It is. Oh, 3D. I can't. It's yeah. really good. I can't tell. It's amazing. We have How whatever you... the hell it is we're fighting this week. Oh. Uh oh. Uh, this creature that is, uh, you know, yeah. part potential, yeah. part eyeball. Uh, just Daring again. At us. Again, the monsters we fight are enough to make someone go totally insane. Mm -hmm. uh, just a reminder this is a thing. These and so this is a thing. Holy! These God. are the things that we that our characters <laughs> have been killed by so many horrific things. That is just like I don't. It just seems unfair. Even, 
It just seems unfair. And yet, whenever we talk about grizzly deaths, we always goes we always go back to like Ankara being eaten alive by rats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even though we've like really seen some we horrific things, other it still goes things. back to like. I think you know, that was the first Ankara moment we all realized rats. that Stephen was gonna definitely <laughs> the fuck out of us like over and over again. I think that's why. And, Did you guys um, so, wait? There was a saloon too, right? I was about to say, and oh. after all these deaths, and probably next I episode, we get right. to meet this sweet lady once more. This is so great! Oh, I love her suit. With yeah, the I rumbles. know. Isn't that awesome? It's good to the see gloves. you. Yeah, this is our oh highbrow God. comedy version. I want that jacket, this is good. dude. Yeah, I like That's that. It great. looks like cheese because the moon is made of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> All These right, so uh, let's wrap this bad boy up. Thank you so much. Let's go around this uh, screen here, find out what Dude. everyone's up to. Real quick, Steven, I have one question. Oh. Because so I, because I, this is a confession. I've never fully played a Souls game entirely. Yeah. All right. But is there like a theme about weird celestials being like villains in those games? It is old godsy as. Oh. I know there's, I know there's like, eldritch old gods, but is there also like Old Testament styled? angel things is that or is that just you just riffing not, off the dome not, not so much um old testament style angels like classic angels from the bible so to speak um yeah aren't a big thing there's there's a bunch of like lovecraftian stuff in in basically all of those games yeah um yeah so yeah. that that's yeah okay okay cool i think my Biblical favorite thing about all, yeah boy yeah all right <laughs> i think my favorite thing about the soul stuff is that it was it, it's kind of interesting in the same way that like Ankara's story was interesting and in that a lot of their lore doesn't have like a beginning or an end. It'll be like, oh, here was this great warrior and he had this amazing spear and he used it to slay this dragon. And it's like, oh, what happened to him? Like, oh, after the war ended, he kind of didn't have anything to do. And uh, I think we're, we think he's still around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah. OK, like he didn't die heroically. No. He's just did, wandering. Did he I mean, do no anything one told else? Me. We don't really know. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's weird. And they have like a lot of stories like that where it's like, oh, yeah, there was this really dope dude. And like, you know, she, you know, he fell in love with this girl. And then like she went into like a painting and like, yeah. And you're like, what? And it's like, mm -hmm. she's probably yeah. still there. She's in a painting, bro. <laughs> like, chill. <Yeah. laughs> if you want to get uh, really old, gaudy, Bloodborne is your, is your source for inspiration. Yeah. Bloodborne is like, Full on old god shit. It's crazy. Also, but, if you uh, don't want to play, did you all eat the, games, the umbilical cord? <laughs> um, I you gotta line your eyes with brain with eyes, bro. I didn't get the ending that I had to look up the like true ending, and I was like, I can't believe that's the real ending. I uh, the oh, ending... I got the real ending because you know I ate the umbilical cord. Y'all have was... read the Pale Blood Hunt, right? No. Will you? like post the link to it in our discord because i'm gonna forget yes i will but for those yeah. of you listening at home you should um, google the pale blood hunt pdf eric there's some really good like just youtube videos about all that too if you're just like interested in the lore because oh yeah I, i've watched yeah. like you know hours talking of about the video about i don't remember which YouTube the videos like, where it's please give me mail please mail give me is, to but... them because I I'm off for the rest of the week so I just want I want to mainline some content so I'll try great. to send you stuff I've watched in the past I've watched like tons of content just about like the Dark Souls map and the way it's designed and like why and yeah. the lore that is attached to it it's, if you wanna... there's some really good videos about it yeah if you well, want to normally... like, watch a video about a, a, a doll taking care of a tentacle like that can be you that can happen that you know yeah, that can be me... that can be your thing. Bronze knows what I'm talking about. Where a doll just <laughs> caresses and takes care of a tentacle, and it's like, oh, all right. Well, that's that. I mean, that happened. Oh my god. That's the thing that occurred. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, if you want to, if that's your jam, if you want a, a living doll to like pet and mm -hmm. caress a tentacle as like a thing you want to see in your life, it can happen. <laughs> it can happen. Okay. All right. This is good. Thank you. Yeah. Y'all are great. Thank you. Uh, uh, I love Dark Souls style of storytelling though. It's very like you have to read the mm. items and like kind of like look for it and you can be as engaged with it as you want or as unengaged with it as you want. 
I uh I like Bloodborne where you can just talk to doors and the doors are like, Get out of here! You don't need to be here. That's my favorite part of that entire game. <laughs> but oh, they're all they all sound like come out. They all sound like cast members from Game of Thrones. Every single what one of them. What are you doing out here on the night of the hunt? And I'm like, is that little finger behind that fucking door? What are you doing there, dude? They all sound like Game of Thrones cast members. Every single one of them. It's hilarious. Okay. Uh, Brit Wiseman, is that still you? It's still me. Uh, Brit Wiseman. Um, I don't know, guys. I'm, I'm just taking care of my new dog because she's sick and she needs a lot of attention. Cause she's a little baby. So that's all I'm doing this week, man. I'm just hanging out with my dog. Um... I don't know. Do I? Have, oh, I do have shows for you. I'm sorry. Um, we recently <laughs> launched a show called Extra Brains, um, where we collectively just uh, brainstorm as a group. I'm a producer on it. I'm not on the show. It's hosted by Anna Prosser and DJ Wheat on uh, both of their channels. We simulcast it. I'm a producer on it, though, so I hang out in the live chat, add some of my own stuff, and, and help put it together. And it's basically just like if you have a uh, problem you're trying to figure out and you want some extra help with discussing it or brainstorming it with people, uh, you can send it to us. So that's on Friday at 2, 1, 1 p.m. Pacific <laughs> on twitch.tv slash Anna Prosser or slash DJ Week. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's all I have to promote right now. Uh, I hope everyone has a very good holiday and please, please just stay safe and stay distant and wear your masks and eat good food and be good to each other and donate if you have the means or the time or the ability. That's all. Steven. Hello. That's good. Let's move on to bro. No, I'm just kidding. What's going on with you? <laughs> um, not much. All right, bronze. What I'm is it in. Oh. Uh, we... <laughs> I was waiting for it. We had our uh, third episode of Pawns and Patrons last Saturday with Anna Prosser, uh, Rachel Seltzer, uh, 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 Neil Koibu, and uh, Jen Libin-Pink. And um, it was awesome. It was a really, really fun conclusion to our starting story arc. Our uh, zero level meat grinder dungeon has been wrapped up. And we uh, are going to get some really, we, we did some really fun stuff at the end that generated a new quest for us to start with next time um, related to one of the patrons that uh, one of our players is in control of. So you should definitely check that out. It's super fun. And um, I think our next session is going to be on December 19th. We're doing a once a month schedule there. Um, so that's it for me. And uh, from, from my side, y'all will see me right here next week. That's it. Uh, Bronze, what you, what you doing? Hi. Um, oh, man. I, I, I think I think I'm out of my grind zone. I did have a really busy couple of weeks, but I think I'm I think things have settled down and I'm excited to sit down and play some games. Uh, I've been really enjoying Hades streaming Hades because I started it, but then I never really finished it. And then I've kind of gotten back into it, but I'm also really enjoying Valhalla because it's kind of my first Assassin's Creed game. And so people keep coming in and asking me, is this different from the other Assassin's Creed games? I'm like, I don't know. I like it though. Maybe that's why I like it because people are like, it's just the same. And I'm like, but if you've never played it before, then it's amazing. So I've been enjoying that. Um, and I have to say, if, so if you want to see me raid Anglo Saxons, it is satisfying as fuck because they're like, oh, you filthy Danes. And then you just murder them. And it's so, it's so good. Like the reverse colonization that I am carrying out has that's why it that's what cleared my skin and raised my credit score so that's been pretty great uh so i'm building my empire and uh, if that upsets you good uh f <laughs> fuck the angle saxons follow that, that bronze you girl good. yeah follow that bronze girl <laughs> fuck the angle saxons we how very specific great. of you <laughs> the king of wessex can s my d <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and same content on Twitter, uh, same stuff. I'm just arguing with people about how uh, the Mandalorian female armor is amazing. And if you don't like it, um, you know, that's okay. Opinions are fine to have, but uh, I don't like you. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks.
Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Look, you'll get no you'll get no arguments. I've <laughs> sat through Star Clone Wars and all the other wars and all the other Star Wars shows, and mm. no one cared about female armor until right now. Right. And I'm like, why though? Should have said something twelve years ago. <laughs> but whatever. Well, if people gonna... are using sword logic like that would deflect. I'm like, we're talking about blaster shots and Beskar, and you're using the logic applied to steel and blades. I don't want to talk to you because I feel like that stupidity might be contagious. There is no logic in the Star Wars universe. Four people infiltrated an Imperial base filled with, I'm going to say, a hundred stormtroopers and managed to single-handedly blow it up, escape five speeder bikes where two crashed into each other, and then four TIE fighters all at the same time. Nothing matters in the universe of Star Wars. That G-Force probably could have killed that baby. We're not talking about that, right? So At all. <laughs> uh, Eric, what's going on with you, dude? Well, uh, normally I'm hanging out in Brit, uh, Bronze's chat, uh, watching her play Hades and Valhalla. But, um, you know, these days uh, I'm also doing some basically the prequel to raiding the Anglo Saxons. And I'm playing Pendragon, where uh, <laughs> we're watching the Saxons raid the Angles right now. Um, currently they have, uh, taken London, which has been really funny, um, in my game right now. Um, I've also just been as part, as part of the game had to do a lot of like, I, I do a lot of like prep and research and stuff. And I was streaming on the weekends when I do it. Uh, it's just me rolling on a bunch of random tables and like making a narrative out of it and all, but I've had to go and read up about like some real, like weird deep lore, like fantasy mythology of England. Uh, and there was this book from like the 12th century called like the Historia Reginum Bretonum or something like that. Some look, some priests had a lot of time on their hands and they were like, you know, who founded England? Or well, like before, like there were giants and shit, but who slew the giants and actually colonized and made London? It wasn't it wasn't the, the Romans. It was the Dragons. grandson oh. of Aeneas from the Trojan War. Yep. That's who did it. Yep. And so here's why. Uh, so we can like look over at uh, everyone in in Italy and across the continent and be like, "Hey, same bros, Trojan War. Like we have the same ancestors." And they just just from there, and that's where you get King Arthur. It's actually it's like really funny. The guy who wrote it's Jeffrey of Monmouth. It's like prolific because he had this book, and apparently he predates it. Like he got this book. He's like, "Oh, I, well, I had a copy of an earlier book from like the ninth century uh, that like no one could ever find." It's just really weird. It's just, it's just a bunch of just dumb lore that, that's clearly made up, but it's so good. Uh, so I've just been like going down this like random deep lore like people in history did this shit too like they didn't have comics but they were like okay well how can we make the trojan war relate to our lives uh that's like it was like the famous like favorite pastime of people uh like that's 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 all they had right like they had the trojan war like that's what they had that was their favorite thing that they knew about that was the avengers yeah i'm just gonna like put this out there i'm gonna take my time today to educate the world in history um <clears throat> We think of history as being not as long as it actually is when we just focus on our tiny lives. And uh, turns out that one of my favorite bits of history is that we look back at ancient Rome the way ancient Rome looked back at ancient Egypt. So we kind of like lump ancient Egypt and ancient Rome together, but there's 2,000 years between both. And so ancient Romans loved ancient Egypt. They thought it was crazy and super cool and like way. So ancient Romans would like get sculptures of them made to look like ancient Egyptians. Yeah. Or they would. Cleopatra is closer to us than the pyramids. Cleopatra is a Ptolemy. Great, 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 great grandchild. And Ptolemy was one of uh, Alexander the Great's generals. So he's. Like, that line of people is, you know, they overthrew the actual Egyptians who lived there. So yeah. that's a whole other thing. But, like, the idea is that whole society, it, like, we kind of look back and we're like, man, that was so long ago and so weird and, like, ancient. And, like, what crazy things did they think about and do? That's how ancient Rome looked back at ancient Egypt. Because it was 2,000 years before them. And they were like, man, they were so weird with their weird gods and stuff and, like, their customs. And it's it's crazy to think about when you realize uh, how long ago some things are and how still pro uh, prolific and important they are to, like, but the crazy things also, happening today. 
to me, it makes it more impressive because I remember yeah. reading this thing that like, oh, ancient Egyptians like knew about like um, drilling holes in the brain to like relieve like pressure mm -hmm. from a head bleed. Like they were doing surgery. And then meanwhile, you have other people that are like, the humors are out of balance. And you're like, okay, how is it? Well, that's, <laughs> like, I mean, that's I get like that the... they didn't have everything right. I'm not trying to say, oh, they had everything dialed in, but like, they had they had pain light bulbs. management. They had like yeah. they had they had light bulbs to light the inside of tombs, like with the jars and the. It's not our light bulbs, obviously. It's not incandescent <laughs> lights, but they had and and so that thing where it's like you had this period of high ancient Egypt and they were brilliant for their time, and then you had like this period of Rome and it was its brilliance for that time. But in between all those periods is when people are like something stupid happens or like something invades something and then for 500 years everyone's like well this life is shit but thank god for the afterlife all right back to the fields everyone <laughs> and that's what the middle ages was it's just everyone's <laughs> like oh we oh and then like someone was like man i hear those ancient romans were pretty good Q renaissance and that's literally what it is and then from there we're like i'm waiting for the next time we go into the post the next post apocalypse we're all like all right gang let's all oh. <laughs> but like that's what i'm so glad you brought it up because that's what the dark ages was it is post-apocalyptic yeah like yeah the, important right? to know that while while western europe was having the dark ages like the middle east was actually in like the own gold of their, yeah. of their yeah. cultural yeah. civilization yeah we that's were, where like, that's where like they stole and... all their memes yeah, algebra, astronomy, yeah. Numbers, decimal the system. numbers, zero. Just yeah. like, decimal system came from like India and stuff, yeah. Tons so maybe, of shit. They, they maybe, were on Jesse, it. that's because we believe in rebirth. So we're like, shit, if we die in this existence of shit, we're just going to come right back and be in this <laughs> shithole forever. Yeah. So we're like, bad. let's we invent plumbing. It. And then we invented plumbing and we had like great clean cities and stuff. And then the first people went to England and or London and saw that people like shit and stuff in the streets and they're like what is happening here look you don't I'm wash not, your hands what the fuck i'm not saying i feel like that's a current problem but to all my very religious brothers and sisters out there i love you deeply but this whole like fuck earth we don't need to care about it my people we need to care about what? this shit what if <laughs> rebirth is what? real you're gonna end up right back here i'm just that's saying not your we need to care about the planet there's only one the, the one the one thing i will point out though is that the Dark Age is called the Dark Age, not because of the regression, but because of the lack of primary sources we have on the time. True. Oh. That's true. Because reading and writing was not as a uh, prolific, pro, whatever, fuck that word, prolific. Um, but yeah, prolific. it wasn't, not everyone could do it. And the church speaking was of, the only people who could. Speaking of things that are prolific, what are you up to these days, Jesse? Uh, speaking of education, uh, we're doing a show myself and Pat Holloman, who is a uh, professor who does like video gamey things. Um, he's written several huge articles about just different games. Uh, we are going to do a show that we now have to animate stuff for. We discovered because some of the things we talk about don't exist in like things we can borrow from the internet. So we're doing a uh, educational show. Um, and the first episode is on inventing the wheel of video games. And the next episode is on rogue lights. So we're gonna be talking about Hades in episode two. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So yeah, that's uh, we tr the first episode we try to tie in the wheel to Mario Brothers. So that's a whole thing. Can't wait for y'all to see that shit. It's wild. That so sounds that's, awesome. That's what we're doing. We need more intelligent, thoughtful, critical thinking in video game content. Yeah, this and not that's just like, my thought hey too. guys, nah, oh my boob God, armor. heated gaming moment. Ugh. I think we need more like of these, especially with some of the harassment, especially people have been dealing with on the internet in the past couple of days. I just feel like we really need to like have more thoughtful dis discussions with critical thinking. My just, thoughts and, too. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah. So I appreciate gonna... you is what I'm trying to say. I appreciate you for for making that. Well, I appreciate you for recognizing greatness, and I think that <laughs> <laughs> I think we should definitely end it there before I ruin this for me. So, uh, <laughs> thank you, everybody. We'll see y'all next time uh, for another episode. Do we have an episode next week? Is that a thing? I think next week, yes. The week after, no. Okay. Yeah, I think we're that's off where on we're the ninth. Oh, great! We get to die just in time. Can't wait. <laughs> All right. See y'all next time. Have a great. 
uh, rest of the week, and we'll see you later. Bye, everybody. I forgot to make this screen do this, and now we're here. You know, where's the payoff? Bring the strippers and boots! We do occasionally talk about video games. Bring the strippers and boots! Out of that time of video games. Bring the strippers and boots! Oh, thank God, I don't need pants now. Hey, JC! What are you doing? Not much. Making a fortune. It's a production of broadcast. Yeah, now sing the music. It's a production of broadcast. Bring the strippers and boots! It's a production of broadcast. Now here to ask and answer one simple question. It's a production of broadcast. You got